Madam Secretary General, Excellency Mr. Undersecretary General, Your Excellency Mr. Shakut Farid, members of the Secretariat, members of the Board of Directors, advisors, and most importantly, young ambassadors, delegates to NMUN 2013. Good afternoon and welcome to the closing ceremonies of the National Model United Nations. My name is Michael Eaton, and I have the pleasure to serve as Executive Director. On behalf of the Board, I would like to thank all of you for your hard work this week and congratulate you on your accomplishments. It also gives me great pleasure to introduce our first speaker this afternoon, Peter lonsky Tiffenthal, the Under Secretary General for Communication and Public Information. The Under Secretary General has been appointed by Ban Ki-moon in August of 2012 and is responsible for the work of the United Nations Department of Public Information. Between 2007 and 2012, Mr. Lonsky Tiffenthal served as spokesman and head of the Department for Communication and Information of the Austrian Federal Ministry for European and International Affairs. He spent nearly 30 years within the Austrian Foreign Service, including stints in Asia, North America, and the Middle East, with responsibilities ranging from public diplomacy, development cooperation, to press and information. He has held senior leadership positions in which he was responsible for formulating communication strategies, including the extensive use of modern media tools and crisis management techniques. Please join me in welcoming His Excellency, the Under Secretary General for the Department of Public Information. Good afternoon. Oopsie. Welcome to the General Assembly Hall here at the United Nations Headquarters. We are delighted to have all of you here, the Secretary General asked me to send his uh, regards. He very much regrets that he cannot be with you uh, this afternoon, uh, but he loves interaction with young people and he told me to tell you that the kind of energy that you are showing and the kind of interest that you are bringing to the work of the United Nations has kind of filled the corridors of the UN and was felt by him even all the way up to the 38th floor. So best regards from, from uh, the Secretary General. Uh, we are delighted that you are here and that you've spent this last week here also because you've shown a keen interest in what the United Nations do and not so much only that but also hopefully will be helping us to share the message with the world that the UN is able today to make a difference in people's lives out there and uh, to show and share with you for a second um, the kind of uh, work that the UN does. I, I got a little note before I walked in here on latest statistics. The UN provides food to 90 million people in 75 countries. It vaccinates 58% of world's children, saving two and a half million children every year. It assists currently over 34 million refugees around the globe, and it tries to keep peace with 120,000 peacekeepers in 16 missions and on four continents. And last but not least, it promotes maternal health, saving the lives of about 30 million women a year. Uh, I mention it because uh, I myself only joined the UN about six months ago, as, as Michael mentioned earlier on. And when I walked in for the first time here in, into uh, the new office, um, I heard a lot about uh, all the activities uh, around the globe undertaken not just by the UN headquarters here in New York, but by all our missions in basically all the 193 member countries. And in the end, it always comes down to one question, how and to what extent does that work benefit anyone out there? And I think, it is our job to explain to the world that what our colleagues are trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis effectively does make that difference for the better. And 
we would like to invite you now, after the kind of experience that you had over the last week, to help us to share that kind of message and to uh, take it with you back to your home countries and hopefully talk about it and, and tell your friends, your families and others, um, and others about it. You have a very famous, uh, uh, if you will, companion in, in your Model UN program. The Secretary General himself is an alumnus of uh, the program, as are many world leaders um, who are currently holding uh, government positions in, in many of the member countries. I understand that my colleague at the outset of uh, the seminar shared with you a little bit what DPI, the Department for Public Information, does uh, around the clock. There are two, three main challenges. One, as you know, the United Nations has six so-called um, working or main languages that we try to disseminate our information with. Uh, plus, through our information offices in many member countries, we try to provide information in as many additional languages as possible. We're trying to do it increasingly via social media, but there are many member states who ask us to continue providing information via more traditional media, via radio, via television. Um, the same is true for print and e-book. Some member states ask us to focus on e-books only, and others tell us, well, but back home it's still difficult uh, to make e-books accessible. Why don't you continue providing uh, printed versions? And thank God printing technology has become a little bit less expensive and therefore it's possible to also provide print-on-demand publications. The theme you've chosen for this week, Change Your World, is extremely timely because it overlaps and coincides with the UN's goal to try and change the world and to make it a better place and through it improve the lives particularly of people in need. Like you, about half of the seven billion people uh, in the world today are under 25 years of age. You are the largest generation of young people ever on this planet. And this is why the United Nations is more than ever committed on working with you um, to reach governments, to reach businesses, teachers, scholars, activists, and civil society. And um, try to empower youth in order to uh, make a contribution to your future since this world and the world particularly of tomorrow is more yours than anyone else's. The Secretary General has mentioned in the message which I think he shared with you um, uh, in your publication, he said, make your voices heard and drive political and social change. Uh, I'll be shortly introducing you, a young man who already makes his voice and through him your voice heard. He's here with us today. His name is Ahmed al Hendawi. He's the newly appointed Secretary General's Envoy on Youth. He's the first ever Envoy on Youth for the United Nations um, in the history of the institution. He joined us only about a month ago, but he hit the ground running with many meetings and particularly with listening to uh, young people around the world. And um, it is my pleasure to introduce him to you so that he can share some of his visions and thoughts and some of the results of the conversations he already had with young people around the world with you. Before I close, I'd like to thank uh, the organizing uh, committee who made this event possible uh, together with some of uh, my colleagues and colleagues of the United Nations because if it weren't for you, uh, these meetings would not be taking place. But the core and at the heart of these meetings are all of you. And I would like to thank you once again that you've come here, that you've joined us, that you've showed yourself interested in the work of the United Nations. You are a force to be reckoned with, and the future of this planet really belongs to you. Take it into your hands. Thank you very, very much. Well, well it's a great pleasure to, to meet all of you today, and uh, it's another youthful day in the United Nations. 
uh, as uh, Mr. Under Secretary General mentioned, welcome to the United Nations. And as the Secretary General always say, this is your home. What you are doing is trying to get closer to the United Nations. And I always start with asking myself, why it's called United Nations? It's called United Nations, my understanding, because it's mandated to unite nations, based on human rights, based on democracy, development, peace, and security. This is the basic mandate of this organization, and this is only one world, one planet that we are living in. In this one world, one planet, there is only one organization called United Nations. It's for all of us. The United Nations is not an organization only run by diplomats or experts or people working in the building. They are, of course, here. But this organization is owned by everyone. This is one planet, one organization, and all of you are coming closer to understand how it works. When you think about how the organization works, I think part of what you do is trying to access and to seek better understanding for the United Nations. To understand better this organization means that you will be able to master the rule of the game. If you want to influence change in this world, you need to know exactly how it works, or how or where you should channel your efforts and energy. You choose the theme of uh, changing the world. And for me, to be honest, uh, it's not about changing the entire world. It's about changing something in our world to make it a better place for us and for the generations to come. Everybody has a role in this. The United Nations now is working to continue meeting the Millennium Development Goals. In April, we'll be flagging 1,000 days left to the MDGs. And all of you, you have a role to implement the MDGs and to continue meeting the Millennium Development Goals. But there's a very interesting news here that why we are written or continue our commitment to implement the MDGs. There's something called post-MDGs, post-2015 Development Agenda. This will be the development plan that will rule our world for the next 15 years. All the doors are open now to hear your voices and to join the consultation. The world we want is a campaign that aiming to involve all young people in this consultation. So you, your voice will be heard and you will be part of setting the rule and the roadmap for the world of development for the next 15 years. But be careful. It's not a wish list to fill. It's not about you coming and tell us and tell the United Nations how the world should be in 15 years. It's about you envisaging a role for yourself and your organization to make it the place that you want to live in. You have a responsibility to share your ideas, but you have a responsibility as well to implement them. This organization meant to harmonize these efforts to bring all member states, civil society, and everyone to discuss, and to provide the venue. And my job, my work as the Secretary General and Voin Newt, is exactly that, to help you to access this organization and to better understand it. I'm not worried about you here, because you already found an access point to the organization. But you and myself are worried about enlarging our network and reaching out to more young people to make them closer to the United Nations and working close with us. Be close to the United Nations. United Nations is not an organization. It's a vision, it's a mission in life, it's a way to save this world and to go to the future in a more progressive way and setting more progressive agenda and development agenda for the world we want. We should inherit this world and make it more sustainable. To make it more sustainable, we should think today we are reaching a point where we cannot afford. If we continue to consume in the same way we are consuming today, we will need three globes to accommodate our needs. So far, it's only the Earth. So it means that we need to join our forces and work together. Be close to the United Nations. Be close to our work. And I am the Secretary General Envoy in Youth. It's a great title. It's a great mission. And as the Secretary General told me as well, I'm your envoy to the United Nations. And you are all envoys in one way or another to the United Nations and to young people. Change starts always from the small circle of your community. Go back in history and look to all innovators who changed the world. They were concerned mainly about changing something in the world, in their community, in their small societies, and turned to be a big success. Let's think globally, act locally, let's join our forces together, 
stay tuned, connected to the organization. The development agenda of this organization is on for everyone, every young person, every young woman and girl. Stay always close. Your job should start today, actually, after leaving this great gathering by transmitting these messages to young people and always find a way to stay connected. Again, it's not about working or filling the seats as represented for your member states or about working in this building. It's about sharing this mission and this vision and this commitment to continue working. Wish you best of luck. Thank you very much.